So I start with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Kathiran Tayyiban Mubarakan Fih Kama Yuhibbu Rabbuna Wa Yarda Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in All praise are due to Allah, the Creator, the Cherisher, and the Sustainer of the Universe and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all His Prophets and in particular Prophet Moses, Jesus, and the seal of Prophethood, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of today, as we are approaching the month of uh, Ramadan, the blessed month of uh, Ramadan, so we'll talk about uh, some of the, the spiritual aspects of uh, the month of Ramadan. Last week, we have covered some of the do's and don't of the month. Now we will look at uh, the objectives of the month of Ramadan, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, this month and prescribed the fasting in the month of Ramadan. We have seen in the video the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from in the smallest of the things that we can think of in this universe, those insects, and even smaller than that, to the magnificent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has, Allah has created everything with precision. And in every act and law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in principle there is a wisdom uh, behind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit anything from us to become hungry and thirsty during the months of Ramadan. He has no benefit in that. The benefit is actually uh, to ourselves. And we will touch upon those uh, aspects of the month of Ramadan. Now let's start with the definition of the word Ramadan itself. Probably some of you had the title of uh, this presentation or this uh, talk is Ramadan, a month of uplifting to different horizons. A month of uplifting to different horizons. So what do we mean by that? And what does it have in relationship to the month of uh, Ramadan itself? Actually, there is a strong relationship between uplift, uplifting the spirit of the human beings and the Muslims who go through the month of Ramadan and even the literal meaning of the word Ramadan itself. So let's start with the definition of the word Ramadan itself because uh, there are a lot of uh, people, even from the Muslims, we don't really know the, the literal meaning of the word Ramadan. The word Ramadan comes from the Arabic root word Ramidha. You know in Arabic all the words they have a root uh, in them that are normally three letter words. So the, the word Ramadan, uh, its root word is Ramidha, Ramidha. And Ramidha means intense scorching heat. Actually the Prophet ﷺ himself he used this particular word in one of the hadith. The, one of the companions or a number of companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they went to ask the Prophet ﷺ, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what is the best timing to do the duha prayer. You know the duha prayers. Muslims do duha prayer. It's not, one, it's not one of the obligatory prayers. It's one of the voluntary prayers that people commonly do on daily basis. And that is the uh, voluntary prayer that a person does after the sun has risen all the way. So the duration is all the way until the noon time. So we can do nowadays say from 5.30 or quarter to 6 all the way to uh, quarter to 12 or 20 minutes, just half an hour before the Dhuhr uh, time. But the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they were always eager to do the things in the best of the ways so that they can optimize and, and maximize the reward that they are getting. So they asked the Prophet Sallallahu O Prophet of Allah, from these long hours, six sometimes in the winter to eight times, in the eight hours in the summer, what would be the best timing? And we will feel that actually this question of the companions when they ask the Prophet ﷺ about the best things to do, they are always looking for the best. And this should be the approach of the believers that since he is doing the thing anyway, let him do it in the best of the ways so that he maximizes the reward. So they ask the Prophet ﷺ, O Prophet of Allah, tell us the best time for doing the Ruha prayer. So the Prophet ﷺ said this sentence. He said, Ida salatul awwabin, salatul awwabin. So he first of all encouraged the believers to do these prayers because he called it 
the prayer of the people who repent. Salat al-Awwabin. Awwabin is the people who are frequently making tawbah, frequently going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those people who do those, this additional prayer is actually they have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the back of their mind. So they break, they break from whatever they, they are doing and they go and do uh, this prayer. So they are awwabin, they are re remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. So the Prophet sallallahu said, Salat al-Awwabin, إِذَا رَمِضَتِ الْفِصَالُ مِنَ الضُّحَى إِذَا رَمِضَتْ And uh, focus in the, on the word that the Prophet is using. And, and this is why I'm mentioning the hadith. إِذَا رَمِضَتْ الْفِصَالُ مِنَ الضُّحَى So he's using the same root word for word Ramadan. Yeah? إِذَا رَمِضَتْ الْفِصَالُ مِنَ الضُّحَى And what the Prophet is saying that here is that when you have the fisal, fisal is the baby camels. Baby camels when they are young and they start feeling the intense scorching heat, they would run away from that heat and the, they will go and hide behind the body of their mothers. So the Prophet is saying that when you see the, the baby camels are running away from the scorching heat, that would be the time of the, the best time of the Zuhar, the best time of the Zuhar. So the Prophet is highlighting to us the point about the intense scorching heat when you start feeling the heat and nowadays is maybe closer to 9 o'clock, 8.30 or so, when you start feeling the heat, and that is the best timing of the duha, and it continues. Of course, the heat, uh, the sun is hot uh, thereafter to, to almost to the afternoon. But what we are trying to talk about is this intense scorching heat, and that is the root word ramida means, that intense scorching heat. So what is the relationship of the heat to Ramadan. Now we said Ramadan is actually uh, coming from this root word. Ramadan is actually process of heat. And that's why when we pronounce the word Ramadan, there are some people who do a mistake and they say Ramadan. So they stop, they make a sukoon on the meme. They, make, they say Ramadan. And that's not the correct pronunciation actually is with the fatha. It's Ramadan, as it is mentioned in the Quran. Shahru Ramadan. It's not Shahru Ramadan. Because Ramadan is the person who goes through the process. Ramadan is the person who goes through the process, and Ramadan is the process itself. Ramadan is the process itself. It's just like many other words actually in Arabic, like Jaw'an. Jaw'an is the person who is hungry, the person who is hungry. And Jaw'an is the process of feeling the hunger. The process of feeling the hunger. So that's the difference. The, slight difference between how we pronounce the word. So Ramadan is actually the process of feeling the heat. And when a person feels the heat, what do we use the heat for? We use it for everything to change, to cook and to change. Actually, it's a process of changing this thing. So even when we are cooking, we are actually, it's a process of changing this uh, ingredients that we are putting on in the pot, they are changing, it's a process of changing. And heat we use to change anything, reform anything. So anything that we can think of as actually has been, heat has been behind the change of that form. So this pen, for example, I have, they actually use the heat to have that shape. The microphone that I'm using, they have used heat to make that form. Yeah. So everything we have and human beings have managed to uh, reform the shape they have used to heat, they, they have used the heat to do that. So heat is there to change. And this should be the effect of Ramadan. Ramadan is there to change, to make that change in us. In, to make that change in almost everything, every aspect of life that we have. So we change the relationship that we have with our Creator, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will go and elaborate a little bit on that. It is actually changing our own behavior and our own self. That is the process of change that we are talking about. It changes our relationship with our families, with our neighbors, with the, with the whole of humanity. It changes even our relationship to the universe that we are living in. So Ramadan is a process of change with everything that is surrounding us, including within ourselves as well. And that change needs to come. And it will come when we have that in the back of our mind. So when we are now 
at the start of the Ramadan, month of Ramadan, we need to have that in the back of our mind that we want to go through this training month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put for us so that we come out of that month totally different people with having a much better spiritual faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and much better behaviors with, uh, with people and much better manners and self-esteem that we can get in the month of uh, Ramadan. So those, this process of change needs to come. And this is why Ramadan has been prescribed to us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to go through this process of change. And this is why the name uh, is given to it that has a relationship with intense scorching heat, intense uh, scorching heat. So the first thing that Ramadan changes our perspective in, and it uplifts the, uh, the perspective that we have of the things, is the relationship with the Creator. When a person goes through the hunger and thirst, he is actually not doing that just to feel the hungry and thirsty, but he is doing that for a purpose. And that purpose is actually to remember that this things that are sustaining our life, they are coming from the Creator. We have seen in the video how those animals and ants and so on, they are surviving in their life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says that there are, from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, animals and creations that do not carry their sustenance with them, Allah provides them. And so is the case with the human beings. Actually, today, we think that we are living with our own doings. Yes, we have an effect on that, but the actual resources are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These necessities that we have in today's life, these necessities that we have in today's life, what are the three essential things that we need that we cannot really live without? Is the air, the oxygen, we cannot live without. The, the, the water, we cannot live without. And the food, we cannot. These three things we cannot live without. We can maybe live without a house, we can sleep anywhere. But these three basic things, they are, we, we need them. They are essential for our sustenance and our life. Today we think that we are the ones who are actually owning this. We are the ones who go to work and bring, buy this stuff and comes. We forget that this, there is a stronger being that is making this available for us. Now we have become so much advanced in science and technology, but we cannot make one drop of water out of nothing. We cannot make one drop of water out of nothing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. We know from the labs that actually a drop of water is formed out of two atoms of hydrogen and one oxygen. But where is that scientist who can actually bring those together and form that water? Yes, we are able to generate that in the lab, but then that water does not provide us with the nourishment that we need. It doesn't provide us with any of the energy that we require. And it, Above that, we cannot actually produce in, in amounts that are sufficient for one person, let alone for the, the, the whole humanity. So who is providing us with that water as the life goes on and goes on? It is the creator who has created this universe. So this resource is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why he is asking us, Have you seen the water that you drink? Is it you who make it come from the heavens or is it we are the ones who provide you? Yeah? We could have made this water. We could have made this water salty, just like he has made the ocean water, the sea water salty. He could have made also the rain water salty. Then how would have been our life? So he's reminding us of this fact that is actually our provision is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, we feel the hunger and thirst during the month of Ramadan so that we reflect upon this bounty and we make our tie with, with the Creator much more stronger. And then when we look at the food that we are eating, uh, we go and buy all those nice and uh, delicious fruits and, uh, and vegetables and so on forgetting that actually these are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So there is not a single human being again, no matter how much advanced we have become in science and technology, that can make one seed, one single seed that we can grow it on in earth and it will bring a tree. There is not a single science, no matter how much advanced we have become in science and technology. It is Allah who creates that. He, it is Allah who makes it germinate and come into, into something that is useful for the human beings, no matter how much uh, we try. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of that fact. 
when we go through this process of hunger and thirst, that should be in the back of our mind. That should be in the back of our mind that we are, our life is actually sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if this oxygen that we uh, breathe day and night, if it was not available abundantly in the environment and we had to ca carry cylinders, just like the gas cylinders, we have to carry the cylinders to, to use for our breathing. How would our life would have been? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this easy for us that the oxygen is abundant. We, we bring out the carbon dioxide and the trees actually bring it back and the air is almost fresh unless the human beings, they exaggerate and actually do uh, the pollution that we are doing. So all this life is sustained by the Creator. And in the first place, it was given also by the Creator. It was given also by the Creator because none of us had a choice to come to this life or not. Did we have a choice? No. Did we choose our parents? No. Did we choose our color? No. Did we choose our gender? No. Did we choose our height? No. Did we choose our color? No. Did we choose the time to come or not to come? No. None of this is chosen by us. It's all given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the first place, the life is given to us by the Creator. And then it is sustained also by the Creator. And it will be ended by the Creator as well. He has the right to take the life as well. That's why the, no matter how much we have become advanced in science and technology again, but there is not a single doctor who can delay our death by one single second. Yeah. So that is how the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So Ramadan is coming to bring us back to that fact and make it very clear to us when we are feeling the hunger and thirst and feeling that heat uh, in our stomach, that is the change that it should be bringing back. And that is the taqwa, which is mentioned in the verse of the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Tattaqoon means that you have the good, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the back of your mind all the time. You become God conscious. You feel the presence of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. You feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in yourself. And that is, that is the first and foremost objective of the month of Ramadan is to change our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, oh Allah, it is you who has given us this life. And it is you who is sustaining our life. Without your provision, we cannot really sustain in the life uh, throughout uh, our time in this, in this world. So uh, that has another connotation as well, which is coming also under taqwa. And that is the feeling, the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is with us all the time. And he is watching us also all the time. The feeling of muraqaba, the feeling of muraqaba that he is overwatching what we are doing. So taqwa has two connotations. He's feeling uh, the God consciousness all, all the time, but feeling also his presence with us and that he is uh, watching on what we are doing. So that is the first thing that Ramadan should be doing to our lives, this change of perspective. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. He says to human beings, O oh, human beings, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem, what has made you so arrogant to us, your Lord. الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي صورة ما شاء ركبك the one who has created you and he made you in the form that you are in in the best of the forms that you are because all of this as I mentioned they are selection they are choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are not our choice so our color our height our gender uh, the time we are born the place we are born the place we are going to die all of that is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, O oh human being, what has made you so arrogant to us, your Lord, the one who has created you and formed you in the best of the forms? And he is the most generous. Rabbik al-Kareem. Al-Kareem, he is the most uh, generous. So Ramadan comes and brings us back to this perspective that we should be having all the time. With this hunger and thirst that we are feeling, this heat that is going in our stomach, actually we are going through a process of liberation, a freedom. And this is the real freedom that a human being should be having uh, as an aspiration, as an objective. Today we speak a lot about the freedom and liberation. I want to be free, free to do anything I like, free to do, speak anything I like and so on. But the real freedom is the freedom of the person of 
of, from his lusts and from his desires and from he, what he wants. When he has the control on his body, when he has the control on his brain, then he is really free. And this is what Ramadan is teaching us. Because a person runs behind the food and drinks and the treasures of this world until he becomes enslaved by those. He becomes enslaved. So as if they become the objective and he is just running behind them. He becomes, he becomes a slave of those things. So Ramadan comes and liberates, liberates us from this enslavement of being a, an enslaved of our lust and our desires and our needs and so on and builds in, in us uh, this freedom and liberation from, uh, from this and teaches us the control on ourselves. So when we are able to control now from the food and drinks and sexual uh, needs that we have during the day of uh, month of Ramadan, we are actually training our bodies that we are the one who have the control on these things. It's not that every time I feel hungry, I have to really uh, drink a glass of water or I, I have to drink, I, I have to eat uh, this food. Or whenever I need to have sexual uh, desires, I go and do it. No, I have a control. My body and brain has the control on that. And this is what Ramadan is teaching us. It gives us that power. It gives us that power that a, a person, if he's able to stop eating and drinking the lawful things, and even having the inter uh, sexual relationships, uh, which is lawful, then indeed he has the power. He has the power to stop doing the haram things. So he is in control of his body. He is in control of his desires. He is in control of his needs. And uh, the shahawat that we have, the ragabat that we have, uh, actually he is in control of the things. And that is what Ramadan is trying to give us the training on. The, and this is really quite critical and crucial that we need to take through the month of Ramadan, this process of the month of Ramadan. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ told us that if a person who uh, does not gain from the Ram month of Ramadan except hunger and thirst, then he is not really uh, fulfilling the objective of the month of Ramadan. If all what he is getting throughout the month of Ramadan is only hunger and thirst, then he is not really fulfilling the objective of the month of Ramadan because Allah is in no need for us to be, become hungry and thirsty. So if a person continues backbiting, if he continues lying, if he continues cheating, then he is not really getting the gain and benefits of the month of Ramadan. Because all of that comes among the things that we are supposed to refrain from. Are, we are supposed to refrain from. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in one of the hadith says that if a person continues lying and backbiting, then, then his fast is not even accepted. He went that far to say that his fast is not really accepted. Because the fasting should be having an effect on our behaviors, on our manners, because we become now good conscious. We remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is watching us. We remember that we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at certain stage at the end of our life. So if that fact is not really affecting our behaviors and our manners, then really we are not really making the full utilization of the month of Ramadan. So this is the second part that comes in the uh, internal change that a person should be having through the month of Ramadan. So it gives us the boost for the person, for example, who smokes and he comes. This is a bad habit. And even the smoker himself agrees that this is a bad habit, but he is not able to stop. So Ramadan comes and gives him a boost that, look, you have been stopping, refraining from smoking for 15 hours now, 15 and a half hours. You have the power. You make the decision. It is your, with your brain that you can stop it. So you can stop it. You, can, you have stopped it for the 15 hours. Definitely you can speed it, uh, stop it from the, for the rest of the day and for the rest of of the life. So it gives that willpower to the person. And this is the change that Ramadan should be having in us. So when a person goes through that he is stopping now from lying and backbiting and uh, speaking law unlawfully and speaking uh, unbeneficial, unbeneficially, if he is able to stop that during the month, uh, during the day in the month of Ramadan, then without any doubt he has the power, he has the power actually to do that also 
uh, during the night time and outside the month of uh, Ramadan and throughout his life. So Ramadan comes and gives him that boost, that power that you are in control of things. Let's not your lust and desires control you, but actually you should be in control of your uh, your bodies. And that is the real liberation. That is the real, real freedom that a person should be having. Ramadan also teaches us actually to become merciful, merciful on, upon ourselves, merciful on the others, merciful on our children, merciful for our spouses, merciful for our parents, the families, and so on. And it intensifies this relationship, this stronger relationship during the month of Ramadan, so that we go through this training, and then we can practice that also outside the month of Ramadan. We always talk about that feeling the hunger of uh, hunger and thirst always reminds us of the poor and needy people who are so many in, on this earth. They are in millions, actually. They are in millions uh, in many uh, places. Actually, according to the health organization, the World Health Organizations, there are millions of people, uh, figure from 20, uh, 2013, I believe, the figure was about 8 million die from the hunger and thirst because of poverty uh, in the world, 8 million per year. So a huge number of people actually are dying because of the hunger and thirst. So Ramadan comes and reminds us that they are, if we are living in, in security and we are uh, fulfilling uh, our needs, there are people out there that need our help and sacrifice uh, a little bit. So that mercy should be coming in, in the hearts of uh, uh, the people who fast and go through uh, the month of Ramadan. So these feelings, they actually make a stronger tie between us and the rest of the human beings on, on this earth. Ramadan also teaches us, uh, what's the word in, uh, in English? al in the So it's uh, discipline. It teaches us discipline, yes. Because we are disciplined in the month of Ramadan, we have prescribed times for taking our food before the break of the dawn. We have uh, prescribed time to break our fast at the time of the sunset. We have prescribed times for the prayers. So it changes the process that we have been going through. Again, it's teaching us that we can change. We can change. But it's also at the same time uh, disciplines us to actually follow a certain routine and then gives us that power that we can modify our habits as per our needs. We can modify our habits as per uh, our needs. So a person should utilize this opportunity which is given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, we are going into a month of Ramadan. There are people who were actually with us in the previous Ramadan, but they did not make it to this month. The people who just died one week before Ramadan. Uh, one of our colleagues actually passed away just six weeks uh, before uh, Ramadan, I'm sure, I'm sure that in the last Ramadan, he didn't even think that he will not be alive to this Ramadan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually to extend our life to this Ramadan. And then we utilize the month of Ramadan because the real loser, as the Prophet وسلم, says, is the person whose life was extended to meet Ramadan, but Ramadan passed and he did not get the benefit of the month and he did not get the mercy uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his sins were not wiped out and then he kept doing the things uh, as usual. So he entered Ramadan and he left Ramadan without any benefit. So he is he is the real uh, lose, loser. Um, so the month of Ramadan is coming. It's most probably starting from uh, tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength so that we go through the month of Ramadan with full power, with objectives that are in mind. We need to put prioritize the things that will really alleviate our status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Work towards them in the month of Ramadan, starting from the very first day uh, of Ramadan. Actually, when the announcement, announcement is made, a person should sit with himself and ponder and put a set of objectives that what is he going to achieve in this month of Ramadan. And first and foremost is to make the tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, uh, uh, I'm making tawbah from all the sins that I have done throughout my life. And as I want to start a new page, 
and make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise Allah and thank him that he has extended our life so that we had this opportunity one more time in our life that we have, we are going through the months of Ramadan and optimize this opportunity in the best of the ways that we can. So with that, I bring this talk to a close. Jazakumullah khair. If you have any comments to make, any questions to ask, uh, I will be more than happy to uh, to entertain that, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Yes, please. Yes. Well, first of all, that uh, this is something that we got from the YouTube, and I cannot uh, separate the two to avoid this doubt. Uh, now, there are a number of opinions, of course, uh, about this. There are some scholars who say it's, it's, it's all right, it's uh, nothing, uh, as long as the objective of what we are doing is clear and it adds a benefit to the people, then it is it is okay. But there are other set of scholars who say that we need to avoid this because it comes under the shubuhat and we need to avoid shubuhat as much uh, as we can. So the two opinions are there and the both of them are actually based on valid uh, uh, reasoning. So, yeah, and I hope that inshallah ta'ala there is nothing uh, wrong in what we, what we have done. Any, anything else? I don't have any question, but I just have a comment. Right. First of all, thank you and Jazakumullah khair for your excellent reminder. Okay. And it has definitely boosted our faith to approach and meet this month of Ramadan very mm. fruitful for all of us. So thank you very much for that. Barakum. <laughs> That's all? That's all. <laughs> Okay then, so we bring this uh, session to a close. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallahumma wa hamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr. Inna al-Insana lafi khusr. Illa al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-Haqqi. Wa tawasaw bil-Sabr. Barakallahu khair.